Hey, so this is a continuation of the last video on communicable diseases, and this time we're focusing on the little buggers that are bacteria. But just to refresh quick, communicable diseases are caused by pathogens, and a pathogen is a microorganism that causes a disease. There are four main types of pathogens, so we've got viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protists. So, bacteria can be pathogens, but it's important to remember that not all bacteria are pathogenic. Some bacteria are good bacteria and help you out a lot, especially those found in your gut. But the bacteria that you should be somewhat worried about can damage cells directly or produce toxins that damage tissues. Because bacteria are colourless and usually invisible to light microscopy, colourful stains have been developed to be able to see them. The most useful is the gram stain, which separates bacteria into two groups, gram positive and gram negative. This stain also shows whether the bacteria is round or rod shaped. So the bacteria is stained and cells that appear blue are called gram positive and those that appear red after the same process are called gram negative. The different stains are the result of differences in the cell walls of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. The gram positive bacteria generally allow substances that damage the cytoplasmic membrane such as antibiotics, dyes and detergents to pass through. But the gram negative bacteria have a cell membrane made up of lipopolysaccharide which blocks the passage of these substances to the inner peptidoglycan cell wall. So antibiotics and chemicals that attempt to attack the peptidoglycan cell wall, such as penicillins and lysozyme, are unable to pass through. And even though the peptidoglycan layer is thicker in gram-positive bacteria, they are more receptive to antibiotics than gram-negative due to the absence of the outer membrane. So basically, gram-positive bacteria have one membrane, while gram-negative bacteria have two membranes and so bacteria are classified into these two broad categories. In addition, bacteria can come in various shapes, including round or rod shaped. Cocci are round and bacilli are rods. There are six classic gram-positive bacteria that can cause disease in humans, and basically every other organism is gram-negative. So the gram-positive lot include guys like Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, um, Listeria, and Clostridium, while the gram-negative group include things like E. coli, Shigella, Salmonella, Legionella, and Yersinia. So taking one of the gram-positive bacteria as an example, Streptococcus, um, it can cause things like streptococcal pharyngitis, so strep throat, pink eye, meningitis, um, bacterial pneumonia, and something known as necrotizing fasciitis, which can also be called um, a flesh-eating bacterial infection, which is something that you do not want to Google image search if you want to sleep tonight, trust me. However, many streptococcal species are not pathogenic and are important for your gut and upper respiratory tract. And streptococci are a necessary ingredient in producing Swiss cheese. And taking one of the gram-negative bacteria as an example, Salmonella, um, it is a type of bacteria that causes food poisoning. This can manifest as abdominal cramps, vomiting and diarrhea. All the good stuff. And it is often found in kitchens that aren't clean, in undercooked foods or food that has not been reheated properly. So bacteria can be good and bad, and to avoid the bad ones having an impact on you and your life, you can do simple things like washing your hands, cleaning your countertops regularly, and making sure you've cooked your food thoroughly. I hope you liked this video. The next one will be a continuation of this theme of communicable diseases, and we will talk a little bit about the little buggers that cause malaria, if you're into that. I'd also like to mention that this video was brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing online resource to help you learn new things. I've just finished a postgraduate certificate for my job. I had to do it, but I really love learning and I love having a goal of something specific I want to learn and Brilliant has allowed me to continue with that. So if you've always wanted to learn, say, computer science, but don't even have Scooby of where to start, then you should start with Brilliant as they have a really great introductory course available in computer science, which starts with an introduction to algorithms. If that's something you're into, you can check them out by going to brilliant.org for slash science with Katie, where you can sign up for free. And the guys over at Brilliant are offering 20% off an annual premium subscription to the first 200 people. So go check them out and thanks for watching. Bye!